The numbers tell the story. According to a study by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Latina teens currently have the highest rate of suicide attempts among all adolescent groups in the U.S. The problem is especially severe in New York State, where suicide has become the second leading cause of death among that demographic. In New York City, Latina teens attempt suicide at more than twice the rate of white youths. Now, a new bill recently signed into law by Governor Cuomo hopes to take the issue head on and to save lives. The Suicide Prevention Act was sponsored by State Senator Marisol Alcantara, who represents the 31st District, a heavily Latino community stretching all the way up Manhattan's west side. And we're delighted to have her joining us now to talk about all this and the bill and how she hopes it will protect some of New York's most vulnerable young people. It's nice to have you here with Thank us. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. I want to talk about the bill in a moment, but let me first talk about the problem. Because you look at some of the numbers, and there's a, a bit of a paradox. Because if you look at New York State, actually has one of the lowest suicide rates in the country. But then not when it comes to the Latino community. Why do you think that is? Um, I think that the issue of immigration in the city, sometimes a lot of Latino youth uh, have to act as interpreter for their parents. So as a young kid, you are dealing with adult issues when you go to the welfare office to translate for your parents, when you attend the doctor's office to translate for your parents, when the landlord comes in and your parent is not able to speak English, you have to serve as a translator. So in a lot of cases, Latino young folks are thrown into adult situations and be privy to conversations that a normal young person at that age is not part of it. So, like, well, they're subjected to adult stresses and tensions when you're still talking about children. Exactly, usually. totally. And also, you live in a city where 29.5% of the population is Latino, and you don't see yourself as a role model anywhere. For example, I'm the only Latina in the New York State Senate. We have one of the highest Latino population in the nation. So they don't see themselves in government. Scene. Exactly. You don't see yourself anywhere. So you are part of the society, but you don't see yourself anywhere in the society. Um, you know, and there's this, we try to visit the schools in our district a lot, um, just letting our young girls know that, yes, you can make it. You can go to college. Uh, I grew up in the, I was born in the Dominican Republic. Some of them are born here, but there's that disconnect and also the cultural differences. Your parents probably grew up in a place that is very religious, very Catholic, um, where what is expected of women is very different than what is expected of a young woman in the United States. I remember I was invited to sleepover. And my mother would tell me, you have a home. Why do you need to sleep in somebody else's house? Um, you want to go out and stay out with your friends. And your parents think that you should be home by 8 o'clock. And, you know, it, it's so just... So significant cultural differences. Cultural differences. And, and they found them, find themselves being torn by torn the apart. culture. Exactly. And also, we have a lot of young folks in the city that are poor. Some of them are undocumented. And just the stress of knowing whether or not your parents are going to be deported that could be at high level of a stress. Because you're thinking about it, uh, for example, the Latinos have the highest rate of suicide in Staten Island. Because you have a huge Mexican population in Staten Island, um, normally undocumented, and it's probably a borough where you don't have a lot of social services, especially for immigrant communities. You raise an interesting point when you talk about social services, and, and it, it brings us to another statistic that I, I found extraordinarily troubling. And if you look at it, uh, the CDC found that only 35% of Hispanics with depression received care as opposed to 60% of whites. Is, do you th is that cultural also, do you think? Correct. It's a cultural thing. Uh, they, uh, the people don't want to be labor. In the Latino community, if you go outside to seek help, uh, normally they so tell you... So there's a stigma it's that a attaches. stigma. Go talk to the priest. Go to church. Pray about it. And there's the stigma that only somebody who should be in a mental institution should go out and seek help. Um, I remember when I had my son, I was telling my mother that I was feeling a little bit depressed. And my mother was like, oh, just I watch TV and do something positive. And, you know, it's that expectations of explaining to your family members. Uh, mental health issues are a medical problem. Just the same thing as having a heart condition, you need to go see a professional. And nobody wants to hear that their kid needs help, especially mental health services. So we need to break that cycle. And, and you know, we have to give credit to the mayor of the city of New York, who has done a lot of work 
uh, around mental health issues and make it more accessible for poor and working class folks. But for example, most schools in New York City don't have a social worker. They have a security officer, but they don't have a social worker. Sad commentary on our time, sir. Correct. Let me talk about the bill. All right, this is a bill that, that you had sponsored, that you pushed, signed into law by Governor Cuomo. Um, what are the highlights of this bill? What will it provide? Well, we, I first want to thank the governor for signing the bill. And it's a demonstration that of his commitment to working class communities and immigrant communities. Um, what the bill does is create an advisory panel that is going to study and look why, uh, why is this happening in the Latino communities? Why is this so prevalent in the Latino communities and not in other communities? And from that study, we can find out what do we need to do to make sure that we can cut those numbers down and what kind of services that we need to provide to the Latino community so our young girls are not dealing with, and what are the stress factors, what kind of resources do we need to bring into the community? As you know, these types of studies are, are essential. You have to have answers to the question why, you and I have been talking about mm -hmm. it here, before you can move forward and, and deal with them and, and, and hopefully to, for some form of resolution. Are, are you confident that once that's been done, the funding will be there so that, that the government will be able to take that next step and say, all right, here's what we're now going to provide mechanically to help these young people? Well, this year is interesting. We were able to provide 250000 to an organization called Communal Life. They run a program called Life is Precious. And what they're going to do is a pilot program in 10 schools in Washington Heights and Inwood. And they are going to set up a support program in these 10 schools to deal with young girls. And normally in middle schools, when it's, you start seeing the trouble of when girls started skipping schools and showing tendencies of problems at home. And we are going to, uh, we have identified 10 schools in Washington Heights and Inwood where we're going to pilot the program. It's called Life is Precious in Spanish, Mi Vida es Preciosa with Dr. Rosa Gale and try to help out and give some kind of support to the girls in our community. Will there be a mechanism here to provide training for, for folks so that you have people who are in a position to see some of the warning signs early on, to recognize them, and, and then people who provide the services, the, 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 the counseling, that will hopefully start to save some of these lives? Yes, totally. We, I invested a lot of resources this year on community group, uh, such as Inwood Community Services, um, like I said, life is precious, uh, Catholic charities to provide mental health services all throughout the community, um, from Inwood all the way to the Upper West Side, so they can work with a lot of the young girls. Are you, just got a, quickly, if I can, last question to you, are you optimistic? Are you seeing progress, do you think, in, in the, our attempts to save the lives of these young people? We are very optimistic. We have done a lot of work in the community around women's issue. And I hope that this coming 2018, we can do more work in our community around issues of sexual harassment for working class folks, um, women that work in the non-traditional employment. Uh, you know, what we've seen in the media is a lot of work around folks in Hollywood. We want to do more training in our community. We want to make sure that uh, Latinos in New York have a nice representation and that our issues are addressed. We are the second largest group in New York City. Um, we deserve to have resources like everybody else. We pay taxes, we work, um, you know, and a lot of times we kept neighborhoods such as Washington Heights vibrant when people were fleeing the city. And we need to make sure that poor and working class New Yorkers have access to services. And I think it's the responsibility of us as elected officials to let folks in our communities know that it's okay to go to a social worker. It's okay to see a mental health provider. It's okay to reach out and exactly. look for Exactly. It's okay to get therapy if you're having problem with your partner. And that can be a difficult exactly. message for people to oh, get. Oh, totally. I always tell people I feel so much better when I go and talk to a social worker about whatever problem I'm having. You know, you come out like a brand new person. And it's something not only particularly of the Latino community, you also see that in the African American community, the stigma around folks getting mental health services, but hopefully we can break the cycle. Well, as we said in the beginning, there, there are frightening statistics, but it sounds like we're moving forward in an effort to break that cycle. So I want to thank you for certainly what you've done here and for spending some time and talking with us. Senator, we appreciate it. You do well. Thank you.